Alan, thank you for the invitation into your company today. Um, on Swarf and Chips and other uh, productions we do, we often look at new companies, people that have founded engineering businesses. Uh, you were that uh, eight years ago, weren't you? Just tell us a little bit about the conception of your company. Yeah, I originally worked for another company in Halifax. I had been doing small amounts of engineering as a hobby, so I had a rough idea of what machines and tools cost, and I decided that I could do the work that I was doing for somebody else for myself and get better quality machines and hopefully build up a bigger business. And, that, and that's where you've come in, in this eight years, haven't you? You've got quite a big business now. Where did you start? Did you have a unit? Um, I had a small unit for a while. I originally was just working with manual machines and I managed to get the use of a corner of an old mill, which was a little bit grim. As soon as I was confident in the business, I managed to move to some better premises, that, which gave me the space to get bigger, better CNC machines in. Which we're in now? Yes. We've now got the installation of this new Victor Taichung machine from Victor CNC in the UK. This is what we would class as quite a heavy duty lathe. Now I know you've watched some of MTD's stuff and I believe you, when you were researching you looked at some of the Victor machines, you were quite pleased to hear of uh, the sort of duration or the length of time they last. Yes, I have seen second-hand Victor machines, which this is based on, that are 30 years old and still working. And I do a lot of work that's in tough materials, stainless steels up to Hastaloys. So it's essential to have a, a heavy-duty box guideway machine that can withstand a vibration. And what would those materials be for then? Who's the work that you, who have you managed to attract? Who are your customers that you're doing that type of material, or cutting some those it, materials? Some of it is oil and gas work. I have in the past done work for refurbishment of gas turbines. And with oil and gas work, sometimes I would associate that with, with very, very large uh, turn components. This machine as a capacity is about a 10-inch chuck, would that be about right? Uh, yes, it's a 10-inch chuck. A lot of the parts that I'm doing in the tough materials now are for industrial fans, which are generally dealing with high temperature and highly corrosive gases. And, and this machine is, is purely turning, isn't it? We did have a conversation off camera about the fact that you looked at milling in conjunction with the turning on the machine, but decided just to stick with turning here on this Victor. Can you elaborate on that point? Yes, I realized that I was probably only going to be using the full capabilities of a mill turn machine about 10 or 20% of the time. I therefore decided for the extra cost, I could get this machine and then get a small machining center to do the other milling work and other work besides, which I thought would be more productive. And you mentioned earlier about looking at machines that have been on the market for a long time to see that these have got a longevity and the research that you've done on the internet and so forth. Has this, uh, has this come out favourably with those facts as well when you've been cutting? I mean, you've been doing some pretty uh, heavy duty machining today while we've been here. Yes. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't been able to do anything that the machine isn't comfortable with. I've, had, I've used it up to its full diameter, I've taken heavy cuts, I've machined tough stainless steels, and it's handled everything perfectly. Uh, what about Victor CNC? Do you think the fact that geographically they're not far from here, was that a swaying factor for you as well? Support, uh, spare parts if you may need them, all just around the corner? It certainly helped. I have been over to their showroom a few times, I also have my training over there, so it's very good to know that there's a 25 minute drive between me and most of the spare parts that I'm likely to need if anything were to happen. And when it comes to programming a machine like this, I'm assuming you're maybe not doing masses, mass volumes, you're quite often at the control? Uh, yes, most of the parts I do are in quantities maybe up to 5 or 10 on this. I was given a um, programming training with the with the machine included in the price. I do most of the programming at the control in G-code and it's it's quite quick and easy. Uh, so you don't use manual guide or anything like that or had, does this machine have that? It has manual guide and I've used it on one or two complex parts for, but for most standard parts the G-code programming is the fastest and easiest way of doing it. What about um, tolerances that you machine to? Uh, Noticing that you do those harder materials, sometimes uh, that can be harder to get good surface finishes and hold tolerance if the machine isn't capable or heavy duty enough. How do you get on with the Victor? 
once you've got the right tooling and you've found the right speeds and feeds, it's very repeatable. And with the options and accessories that you can have with a machine like this, Alan, what did you opt for? What was of interest to you? It was largely everything that I needed was in the standard tooling package that came with the machine. It's fairly comprehensive. It's got all the tool holders, the jaws. Even things like the tool setting eye, were they not things you had to spec out or did they come with the machine that was no, in stock? No, the tool setting arm was standard, so was a parts catcher, the swarf conveyor. The only thing I asked for was higher pressure coolant. And that you have on this machine. Uh, what about warranty and support? Because that's you know a small business, you want to make sure that if you do have a problem, it's covered. Uh, there's a two year warranty on this machine and I'm, I'm confident that there won't be any, any issues.